Hey students, I got an email at the Light and Salt Learning um, email address. So you can, if you have any questions, you can certainly email me. That's lightandsaltlearning at gmail.com. But I got an email on there from a student who was struggling with this word problem, and it is so GED typical. So I thought, let's give this one a try. So let's go ahead and take a look. Word problem said, Jeremy has a weekend job as a soccer referee. One weekend, he earns $140 by working four games. Another weekend, he earns $210 by working six games. If Jeremy graphed an equation that would represent his total earnings based on the number of games worked, what would be the slope of the graph? What would be the slope of the graph? So what are they asking us to do or to find here? Well, they're asking us to find uh, the slope of a graph. If I were to plot these earnings on a graph, um, and so let's go ahead and make a good graph to get started, and then I'm going to solve this sucker two different ways, and we will look at it both ways. Okay. So what do I have going on here on this graph? What is my uh, independent and my dependent variable? Well, I'm saying that the money that Jeremy makes depends on how many games he referees. And so the games here are the independent variable. That's what Jeremy can manipulate. He can work more or less games. And let's see, looks like we need to get up to six. Notice how I put my uh, independent variable, that thing that Jeremy's manipulating there on my horizontal axis on that left right um, line there. And now on my vertical axis, what depends on the games? Well, his, his earnings do. His earnings are going to change based on the number of games he works. So I'm going to put his earnings um, on this vertical axis, the line that's going up and down. Uh, and that's because that's the dependent variable. The earnings depend on the number of games he plays. So let's see, I have uh, 140, 210. I don't want to make 210 little dashes, you guys. Looks like I can count by 70s. I think I'll do that. 70, 140, 210. And that was just for labeling purposes, okay? If you can't count by 70, that's not that big of a deal. But we do need to make sure that 140 and 210 are on this graph. Okay, so let's get these couple of points on the line. Uh, let's see, he earns $140 when he works four games, okay? So when he works four games, I'll come over here to four games, he earns $140. Four games, $140. Okay, and then when he works six games, six games, he makes 210. So I'll get six to cross with 210, that's about right there. Okay, now notice it asks what would be the slope of the graph? Well, there's a few different ways to find slope and it depends on what you've been looking at. So let's, I told you I would solve this two different ways. I'm gonna do it two different ways. You don't have to memorize both ways, okay? Whichever way you like better will work just fine for you. But the first way I'm gonna do it is the way that I usually do it when I have a graph. Slope from a graph. So when you're doing a slope from a graph, the way we usually do it is we just count. We count what we call the rise. That's the change in y, how much your graph is going up or down over the run. The change in x, how much you're going left or right. So basically, I'm going to look from one of these points to the next. How much do I need to go up and how much do I need to go over? Let's measure the rise first. How much do I need to go up? Well, if I'm going from this point to that point, uh, that is a rise of how many dollars? Well, let's see, I started at $140 and I went up to $210. That's a change or a rise of $70. And you might be saying, Kate, sure, easy enough for you. The number 70 popped into your head. Where am I supposed to get that number? Well, you can find a change by subtracting. You can take the new amount, $210,
subtract out the old amount, 140, and you can see that we rose or changed by $70. Okay, so our rise here is $70. That's what I'll put on top of my fraction. Now my run is how much I went over the change in this case in the number of gains. So I increased $70 when I worked how many more gains? How many more games did this gentleman work? Well, at our first point, he had worked four games, four games. And then at our second point, he had worked six games. So that's a change of how many games, how many more games has he worked? Well, six minus four, well, that's two. He's worked two more games. So my $70 I made over the course of two games, $70 over the course of two games. Now, I hope you know that a fraction bar means the same as divide. And so a quick way to find the slope here is just to divide. Let's do it. 70 divided by 2 uh, gives us 35. That's a slope of 35, but this slope of 35 has a meaning, guys. It means that this dude is making $35 per game. Remember that the real world meaning of slope is a rate of change. This is how much his earnings are changing every time he works another game. So he is earnings go up $35 per game. This line has a slope of 35. All right, now that's the first way you can solve it. You can count rise over run, but that's not the only way we know how to do slope. Slope is also on the GED formula sheet. So let me go ahead and clear this little work and let's look at this problem another way. Uh, basically, when you're looking at, at the GED formula sheet, you're actually going to use that formula when you are trying to find slope. But this time, instead of being given a graph, you've been given points. Now you might say, Kate, I haven't been given points, but you sure have. You just might not have recognized it in word problem form. Let me show you what I mean. This is a point. He earns $140 by working four games. It's the relationship between an independent variable, the number of games, and a dependent variable, the money he makes, depending on the games he works. And there's another point. Uh, he earns, uh, there's another relationship, that same relationship between that same uh, independent variable, the games he works, and the dependent variable, the money he earns. So super duper important though, when you do your slope, we have our independent variable, our x first, and then our dependent variable, our y second, okay? So he works four games, and then he makes $140. The $140 depends on the number of games he works. He works six games, and he makes $210. So uh, whether you draw it on a graph, or you realize those are points, we ought to be able to get to the same answer. So what do we do here when we have points? Well, that's when you bust out that formula. On the GED formula sheet, we have something called the slope formula, and it says this, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And students get really intimidated this, by this formula, but I want you to see that this mathematically is just exactly what we did earlier. We said the first thing we would do is find the rise, the change in y's. Well, how much did my y's change? Well, I don't know unless I subtract them. So let's do that. Let's take the uh, y2, the second y. Well, here's the second y value, $210. And from that, let's subtract y1, the first y value. Well, what was our first y value? $140. And we'll find how much y changed by. Well, you and I already know we did that work earlier. It changed by $70. And then what does it say on the bottom of that fraction? x2 minus x1, well, same thing. It says take the new x, 6, subtract out the old x, 4, to find how much the x has changed by. Well, we did that work as well. 6 minus 4 is just $2. And as we already know, 70 divided by 2 is 35. So this line, again, has a slope of 35. So it doesn't matter whether you get that information from counting on a graph. or from using the slope formula, 
do whichever way you think is clever, whichever way you like better. But the slope of this line is 35. It's the dollars he earns per game. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.